Okay, welcome back. And now it's time to put the front suspension on the 442. I'm really excited. One last thing to do, and that's pack wheel bearings uh, for the hubs. So I uh, was going to skip over this and just go, hey, I packed wheel bearings uh, ready for the hubs. But um, been, I've been told at least once or twice, hey, uh, don't automatically assume that we know all these things. Hutch, don't, don't skip over this stuff. We want to see what that is and how you did it. Um, so, fine. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so join me now in the exciting world of packing wheel bearings. Okay, so if you've grown up in a world of sealed hubs and um, this is like old school stuff to you and you've never really done it before, let me show you the old school way of how we used to do it. So I'm going I'm to try to do it with just a little bit here so I don't make a giant mess and I can kind of explain this a little bit better. So you get a glob of grease laid out in your hand. I like to use a glove to keep myself from getting messy. And uh, you take your bearing. And what you're going to do is the back side of the bearing, you can see where all these rollers are, those need to be packed with grease. So what you do is you just, um, almost like Pac-Man, you take uh, this edge right here that's open and you're just going to slowly nibble away at this glob of grease. And what it does is, as you take a bite and push back, and, uh, and push down on your hand, you're forcing it into that recess. And what you do is you just keep doing that over and over again and you'll actually see it start to bubble out the top. And once you uh, get the, the grease coming out the top, you know you've got uh, the wheel bearings fully packed. So let's, let's real quick, I'm just going to nibble at this one section. Usually I like to do is just kind of go in a circle and just keep going around and around until the thing is packed. But let's do one spot and just do it over and over again. Now, as you can see, you're starting to see the grease start working its way out the top of the bearing. So that's essentially all this is. You're just eating away at this grease and you're taking little nibbles at it and you're pushing down and you're forcing it into that recess. And you do that enough times, eventually it starts to force its way through the bearing and up through the rollers and out the top and then now you can see it's it's really starting to work so I'm going to work my way around until this uh, glob of grease is gone and then um, then I'll be done with this bearing and then we'll move on to the next one probably going to need some more grease but I didn't put a lot on here because I didn't want to make a huge mess I wanted to actually uh, give you a chance to see this stuff coming up through the bearing. Yeah, there we go. So that's starting to work. Let me push. You're going to get uh, you're going to get the bearing in the center is going to eat up some of this as you do it. Just going to push that out and just keep plugging forward. I might have got just the right amount to completely pack this bearing. We'll see. I'm running out of grease here. Yeah, probably going to need some more to finish this up. It's a general idea though. You keep working around, working, working until you see the grease push all the way up the entire side. And uh, that way you know you push the grease up through the bearings. Look at that, that huge glob of grease I had. It's all gone because it's in there now. So I'm going to need some more. And then we'll have this done. And then we'll be ready to do front suspension. So, very excited. All right. Here we go, boys and girls. It's where it gets fun. This thing is actually going to start going together. So, this is a UMI lower control arm. UMI performance, those guys are, uh, those guys are pretty awesome. Raimi and the group over there, um, they have a, a 79 Monte Carlo. I believe it's their test bed vehicle, Green Machine, uh, you probably know it by. Um, so they're making a lot of G-body parts, so uh, thank God for those guys. Um, and this is a well-made control arm. Uh, all their stuff, um, it, it, they test everything. They put it together, they slap it on the, the Green Machine, and they go out and beat the crap out of it to see if it stands up. Um, and the stuff does, so I'm really impressed with what they had to offer. Okay, so what I did and what I found is the best way to do it because this spring is going to need to be compressed 
and um, I have no weight on the front of the vehicle because uh, everything is out. So I had to think of a way to get this up in here, um, the, the shock. So what I did was I actually bolted it uh, loosely to the lower control arm and I have it on the jack. And then what I'm going to do is place my spring on and then I'm going to position it underneath the vehicle here. And then I'm going to use the jack to get this thing up until I can get the, uh, the top of the um, strut into or the top of the shock, I should say, into the top hole and I can get the thing secured. And then I'm going to go and actually get the um, get the, the bolts for the lower control arm in place. So I just got to make sure that, uh, there you go, the bushing is going to go on the seal and this angle might not show it. But now that I've got this thing under pressure uh, on top, I've actually got the top of the shock coming through the hole and there's not enough space to be able to uh, put the bushing uh, for the top on. So what I did was I just used the washer and the nut. So now I've got the thing contained in place so it's not going to fly out on me. Uh, just in case something happens, this thing kicks out, this isn't going to come flying out the bottom. So it, it's held in place on the top. Don't have to worry about that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing kind of moved where I need it and then I'm going to jack it up to the point where I can flip these two arms they're almost there now I can flip these up and then uh, get my three-quarter bolts through and then once the control arm is in place and I can put the spindle on put the top control arm on makes everything easy from there so now it's just a matter of jacking this thing up a little bit more and we have to stop right here for a second um, I'm actually come off the jack stand on this side because there's just no weight on the front end of this vehicle. So I've actually got, um, I'm going to use some of the bars from uh, the, uh, the rotisserie and uh, some, some weights that I had in the basement. And I'm actually going to put some weight on this front end so I can have enough weight to compress the spring just a little bit more so I can get those bolts in. So stand by with me. Okay, so I've got, got weight on the top here now uh, to kind of help, and that helped out a lot because what I was able to do was when to put the weight on it, the, the top stud for the shock went up deeper into the frame, and I was actually able to put the bushing on, get the washer and the nut in, tighten that up a little bit. So now I've got the spring under a little bit of pressure, and I've actually lowered the jack down a little bit so it's kind of hanging, and I think that's going to allow me to move this over and uh, get these in place. Now, these are polyurethane bushings. So uh, the UMI kit came with a little tube of uh, some of that um, elephant snot grease, about the same type of thing. Uh, so I got that lubed up because these are going in and there's going to be metal on, uh, metal on polyurethane, so I don't want any squeaks. So if I can get this thing it's almost there right now. I can pull this thing a little bit over. There it is. If I can just hold it in place long enough. Here we go. Get my bolt started. This one in place. There we go. All right. So now that's fed in. Get that one in place. And looks like I can drive that through. Okay, so I've got the first one started, but it's cocked at an angle and I can't get through the back. And instead of trying to bind that up, I'm gonna go back and move the back bushing in place, get the uh, back bolt through, and then I think that's gonna help line the front one up and they should go right in. So, need to finagle myself. Get a little bit of angle here. I should be able to, oh, look at that. I went right in. Yeah. So now, bear with me, the front one is in place where I think I can just tap this right through. 
boom. Okay, so now we've got our lower control arm in place. I'm going to get these nuts started on the back side here. You never want to tighten this up to the torque spec until you have everything done. It's under vehicle weight, uh, and then you can you can get a jack stand under the front and uh, do both sides. That way it's at ride height, it's at a proper compression, and then you go ahead and tighten everything up. That keeps you from having a bind. If I tighten it up now, it's going to want to stay this way, and then when the suspension is up in its proper place, it may put the bushings in a bind. So we don't want that. So now the shock is in, lower control arm is in place. Now we go to the upper control arm. Now, it's time to put on the upper control arms. This is also from uh, UMI Performance, and it's almost a shame to put them on a car. These things are so damn pretty. This is a, a really interesting design. I really like this. So, in the old control arm, basically when you had this cross shaft on, if you wanted to go with negative camber, you had to um, loosen it up, you'd move it back, you would put shims in between the bolt and this cross shaft, and that's how you would, would get more negative on your uh, camber. What they've done, it's pretty interesting, and it's the same thing. You, you could shim it either way to get like a positive or negative caster. So what they've done is they've put these rod ends on, um, and they have bolts on them. So once you get it together, I think they're, they're, they say in most cases you don't need shims at all because I think the way this thing is made, when you bolt it on, both of these rod ends are run all the way down to the base of the, the upper control arm. And I think that puts you, uh, by the way they do it, in a very negative camber situation. So all you have to do is adjust out for how much you want. So you loosen it up, adjust it out, and you're good to go. So they say in most cases, you do not need to add any shims. Uh, and I guarantee that, and why would you? But um, they say in most cases that that's what happens. So we're just gonna put the shaft on, no shims, and then hopefully uh, we're gonna be fine and we'll just do an adjustment out to get our settings exactly where we want them. So it's a 13 16 just to hold the back side. And once you have these snug down, these will get tightened to what UMI recommends, which is 60 foot pounds. Just that simple. So now what we got to do is get our spindle and then put our hubs on. Now we're getting into the home stretch. Got my got my spindle here. Look how pretty it is. Got it all painted up. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this in the lower ball joint. And the ones I got from UMI are a half inch taller. So. Um, if you're doing something like this and you're using taller ball joints, um, they're not going to... What you're used to seeing is um, the, the shaft goes in and it goes all the way... Let me scoot this down. It goes all the way up to the boot so you don't see any of the shaft. But because these are longer, uh, the, the fatter the taper is at the top, it's not going to seat all the way against the ball joint, the, uh, the upper boot. The boot's sealed. It's fine. Uh, it, so you're going to see a little bit of sh uh, a shaft here in the in like a gap in there. So it's not a big deal. Uh, UMI tells you it's, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. So anyway, so I get the bottom ball joint. I got a ton of weight sitting on the front of the vehicle now to, uh, to try to be able to get this top ball joint uh, connected up. So going with factory torque specs. Uh, so the bottom one, it says it's uh, 83 foot pounds. So we're going to go 85. It's close enough. And the top one is 61. I'm going to go 60. That'll be good. So usually what I do is get it together. I'm going to torque the upper and lower castle nuts on the ball joints. And once I get them, once I hit the torque spec, then what I'm going to do is back it off because I don't want to go any tighter than that. It's set for that spec. That's fine. I'll back it off just enough that I can get the cotter pin through uh, one of the holes in the in the the ball joint. So. Uh, 
that's what we're doing right now. I got the top one seated, and man, I love these. The, the UMI, they think of everything. So the bottom control arm, there's uh, where, the, um, where the two arms of the, of the lower control arm come together. It's uh, actually a cup in the, the, um, the ball joint where the, um, where the nipple is to, to put the grease in. It's up inside of that. So I, you can come with a flat jack all the way out to the very end and it's not going to damage, um, it's not going to damage the fitting. So, man, they, they really know what they're doing. So, now, I've got the bottom one seated in, and I'm hoping I'm going to have enough weight on the front of this that I can get this started. Feeling inside here. A little bit more. I should be able. Oh yeah, we're off the jack stands now. So I think I've got enough. Yes, I do. I've got plenty to be able to get that on. So now, what I can do, since I've got my got my torque wrenches here ready to go, I'm just going to these down and that should that should use the ball joint will actually draw this down right where I need it nope let's get it from this end here since it's going to turn on me use the, the stop of the spindle to hold it in place we'll get this top one torqued Perfect. So now, this one is rotated around the other side. This is the bottom ball joint. Get this one forked in. That's just about there. Perfect. All right, so like I said, so now look, it's in place. I'm gonna be able to lower this down now. Won't have to worry about this thing. There we go, let's get it back down onto the jack stands. That's good. All right, now it's self-contained. All I gotta do is go back now, uh, tighten up the, the two bolts in the bottom of the shock. The shock is basically held in place right now. It's captured, so I just got to tighten them up uh, to the correct spec, and that's fine. Tops together, bottoms together. Only thing left to do now is, oh, only thing left to do now is put in our hubs, and we're set. Oh, and I got to back these nuts off just enough so I can put the cotter pins in. That's no big deal. Cool. So all that is left to do now is to put the bearings into the hub and then just install the hub onto the spindle. The kit comes with the grease seals and uh, let's see if I can get this a little closer. The grease seal, um, the, the lip on the inside, one side uh, of the lip faces in It's because it's kind of beveled. You want to make sure that that lip is facing in towards the hub. That's what kind of holds the grease in, okay? You put it the other way around, basically the bevel's going out and the grease can escape. So just make sure that, that lip is facing inward toward the hub. So we're going to take a little grease. I like these. The, um, the races are already installed into the hub, so you don't need to worry about that. And in the kit, it tells you the number of the, the uh, bearing. So if you need replacements, you know what to get, so you're not guessing. All right, so the inside of the, the race is greased. I've got my bearing goes in. That's seated in place. I'm going to spare you all the uh, incessant tapping, um, but basically you're just using a small hammer. i got a small hammer here. And you're just tapping in this seal uh, until it's flush with the, the end of the, the hub housing here. 
So I'll be back in a second once it's installed and then we'll go put it on the car. So now we're going to put the hub onto the spindle. I've got, let's see if I can bring this up here. So I've got the bearing in. Here's a good tip. Um, I, did, I did it the right way, but I've done it the wrong way. Put the bearing in and then put the seal on. You put the seal on, the bearing doesn't fit. Ask me how I know that. Okay, so that uh, rear bearing is in and we're going to take a little bit of grease and we're going to grease up this front race. Make sure that's nice and lubed. Want a good lube surface for everything to ride on. That's good. So now we're going to take a little bit more bearing grease. And we're just going to get a nice coat on the spindle. So everything is nice and lubed. You could probably put too much, but uh, I like to make sure that this is good and greased. Just to give it a little well of grease inside there. Okay, so now that's greased up. Bearings are lubed, races are lubed. Hub's ready to go on. So you move the hub down and this, this seal is going to seat. There you go. Right on. Push it down as far as you can go. Alright. So that's good and seated. So now ah, we put our front bearing in. Get that in. It's good and sealed. Now, here's something, if you're doing this, you got a G-body. Here's something that I ran into. Because uh, the kit doesn't come with the castle nut or the, uh, the bearing spacer or the nut spacer, however you want to, the washer. So, and you can see it's, it's, uh, it's specially made. It's got a little groove that goes into the groove on the spindle. You save these from your original spindles, this is the only thing that you save is the castle nut and the washer. All right. Well, when I went to put this together, it's got a screw on uh, bearing cover that goes on the end of the hub and I found, here's the problem, the washer is the same size as the hole. So once you get like a couple of threads in, uh, it jams up on the washer and it won't tighten up and it actually locks the hub up because it's pressure on it. So I had to do some hunting, went around, I actually found, um, it was, uh, it's like a bearing kit, it's a, the, it comes with um, the nut and the washer and the cotter pin and everything. I found this at Napa, um, down below I'll put the part number in case someone's doing this and they run into the same thing. I haven't heard a big deal about this uh, online so I don't know if it's just me or um, this is an issue other people have had, I don't know. But anyway, I had to get this. It's actually a little bit smaller. Boom, fits right inside. It's perfect. So, that washer goes on. Then we put our nut on. And it's a one and one sixteenth is the size on the nut. Let's get this run down. All right, so that's hand tight. Now, as I rotate this, I'm going to tighten this up just slightly because what I want to do is as I'm rotating, I'm seating the bearings, okay? So you want to give it a little bit of tightness, all right? And once I feel a little bit of change in the hub, all right? So that is, that's tight on there. So now, I'm going to take it and back it all the way off. I bring it down to finger tight and then maybe just a little bit snug past that, just enough to line up with the hole to put the cotter pin in. Now, for those of you at home, I've already done the other side and I ran into this and I thought there's something wrong. Um, either I did something wrong or there's something wrong with the bearings, 
but this thing is super tight. And that's just finger, that's finger tight, right? Taking all the play out. And it's, uh, it won't freewheel. And I ran into this on the other side, and I'm like, what the heck is that? Did I bind the bearing up? Is it too tight? Well, it can't be too tight. I have it finger tight, literally. And I tried loosening it up more, and actually it, it created a little bit of slop, a little bit of play in the hub. So I seated the hub back down, tightened it down finger tight, and I'm like, what is that? All right, because the bearings that come with the kit are, uh, they have a plastic cage on them. And I thought, well, maybe the cage is distorting, maybe something's jamming it up. I don't know, what is that? But I read online, and uh, basically the cage is just there to hold the, the rollers in place. The rollers are carrying the weight, the rollers are doing the work. Um, and they're actually uh, just as good, if not better, than your standard stamp steel cage uh, bearing. So that wasn't it, at least by what I could find. Um, so it, it, it was bugging the crap out of me. I'm like, I don't want to put this together and end up burning the bearings up in, in the first 50 miles I drive the car. <clears throat> so what I did, since I did the other side, and I hadn't done this one yet, um, and I did this, uh, you guys, uh, before I showed you how to put this on, I actually installed it with both bearings without the rear seal in. Because the seal is pretty tight over that uh, the ridge in the back where the, where the seal sits. So I installed it without the seal, freewheeled, really nice. Put the rotor on it and it, it, you spin it and it would it'd spin nice and smooth forever. So it's just that seal causing all the drag. So if you do this kit and you run into this and after you're done, you're like, wow, I've, I've over tightened this. Something's wrong. Why isn't this? I'm, I'm used to like an old style, big, heavy ass rotor and you put the bearings in, regular steel bearings, and then you spin it and, and it, it spins a couple of times nice and smooth. That's when I knew I had it just right. And uh, this didn't do that and it freaked me out and it's just that seal in the back. It's the drag on that seal. So if it's a drag on the seal, I don't care. As long as the bearings inside here are doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're not bound, I'm good to go. So, did both sides the same way, tightened it down, rotated it, seated the bearings, took it all the way off till it was loose, finger tight, and then I just maybe turn it a little bit tighter than that just to line up the, the pin, the cotter pin for the hole. That is it. And um, like I said, without the seal, it, it, it spun smooth like butter. So I'm happy with that. Um, I can deal with it. I might call UMI and just uh, ask them about it and, and uh, get a second opinion, but I, I think I found the issue. And uh, I'll probably let them know about this spacer thing. I'm not sure if anyone's ever brought that to their attention or not. Maybe they ought to include a washer in the kit because uh, the stock one, at least for me, uh, did not fit. Anyway, so that is it. So let's say I'm, I'm not going to go through the, the trouble of putting the cotter pin and everything in. Uh, I'll do that later, but I wanted to show you the uh, finished product. So, once that's on, you just tighten this down. It's got an O-ring on the inside here so the grease doesn't go out. And there you go. Ah, nice and pretty. So that is it. Um, let me grab the camera and I'll give you a quick uh, pull back a little bit and show you the whole suspension and the hub and everything. But that's it. The front suspension's in. Moving forward to the next thing. And the payoff. So we got the front suspension on, upper and lower control arms from UMI. Got QA1 coilover shocks and Willwood hubs. Also cut the spindles to make room for the big brake kit. So really excited. It's starting to come together. Uh, yeah, here's the old crap that came off. Ten and a half inch rotors. Come on, GM, really? Uh, I guess uh Guess for a 307, maybe they figure that's all they need. But uh, it's going to be a little bit more horsepower in this car when I'm done with it. So I'm going with C5 rotors, which is a big honking 13-inch rotor. Um, hell, even in the rear of the vehicle, I'm using uh, Ford Explorer rotors. Those are 11 inches. So anyway, so that's what we got. Everything is together. Ooh, it's looking sweet. It's looking very nice. So... That's uh, step one in my uh, chassis modifications. So next, um, next I think we'll be moving on to rear suspension. Then maybe I'll just tackle brakes in one big video or maybe split it up into two front brakes, rear brakes. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, that's it for now.
I tell you what, you like this channel, do me a favor, swing over to my t-shirt shop. If there's something you like, buy it. You get a shirt, I get a little bit of profit, everybody wins. All right, well, that's it for now. Take it easy, guys.